If you were in the U.S. Army during the Spanish-American War, you were lucky to have a Craig Jorgensen. A lot of guys went to Cuba carrying trapdoor Springfields. The 1898 is one of the smoothest and slickest U.S. military rifles of all time. Pound for pound, ounce for ounce, no rifle in the history of rifles has an all-around, out-of-the-box, smoother action than the uh, Craig Jorgensen rifle. The bolt action 3040 rifle that was adopted by the United States military at the close of the 19th century, to this day, has been unsurpassed for smoothness in operation. You can pick up any of these rifles, relics of our Spanish-American War, the splendid little war of 1898, and uh, no matter whether they're, they're, they're brown with frost and patina or, or still bright armory uh, colors, the action always works smooth as glass. The Krag is a Norwegian invention invented by Krag and Jorgensen, who were working for the Norwegian Armory, their state arsenal. And it's a very interesting rifle in that the bolt action and the magazine is operates off the side. It's got a side-loading lever, and you simply take a handful of cartridges as long as the bullet's going this way, it really doesn't matter. You just dump them in, slam it shut, and the mechanism in there just sorts them all out. When you crank it back, for Americans who are used to shooting bolt-action rifles, it's a little disconcerting to see the cartridge actually pop out of the left-hand side of the receiver. There are a number of variations of the Krag. When it came to the U.S. military in that era of the 1890s, and the Krag served from 1892 to about 1904, with some National Guard and militia units using it even a little later. And the thing about the U.S. Army Ordnance Department is they continually upgraded these guns as they discovered uh, they had a problem or a better rear sight came out, they would modify it. And that's the case in particular with, with the 1898 Krag, which was one of the last uh, versions of the military rifle. Uh, of course, the United States fought the Spanish-American War in 1898. And so you see 1898s more in the Philippines, of course, than you do in Cuba. Uh, but the Krag rifle served American soldiers very well uh, in context of what other American soldiers were using. Literally, New York and other National Guard units went to Cuba to fight Spaniards using 7x57 Spanish Mausers uh, with single-shot black powder trapdoor Springfields. Uh, compared to a trapdoor, the Krag is a heck of a rifle. Compared to a Mauser that was clip loading, there are some serious disadvantages. One of the big selling points of the Krag design was the fact that it was a magazine system that could be topped off without having to open the bolt of the firearm. That underneath the, the underneath design of the magazine was such that the rifleman could have a round in the chamber ready to fire, open the magazine gate, and top it off with a few rounds and close the magazine gate without having to open the action. This was, as I mentioned, for a brief period of time, thought to be a really strong positive in a world that was transitioning from single shot to magazine fed repeaters. And this is the United States first standard smokeless magazine repeater. And it serves famously in combat during the Spanish American War, where you see troops that go to Cuba, troops that go to the Philippines, armed with the 1892 and 1896 crags. The 1898s are a little bit too late to see service during the Spanish-American War, uh, but still, they soldier on, and the 1898s and 1899s are used in combat during a conflict that in another era was referred to as the Philippine Insurrection, a conflict that is now more generally being referred to as the U.S.-Philippine War. It only took the Spanish-American War to bring up the shortcomings of the Krag. And it's the principal one being that it was too slow to load, to reload. 
cartridges had to be handled loose. You opened up the, the magazine and dropped them in one at a time. And the Spanish uh, troops who defended in Cuba uh, had 93 Mausers, which they could load in five shot stripper clips. And plus a very flat trajectory for the seven millimeter Mauser that those guns were chambered for. And it showed up the fact that a, a 30 40 uh, rimmed cartridge was probably obsolete. Uh, even at the time it was adopted. And that led, of course, to the development of first the 3003 and then later the 3006. By the end of World War I, it was obvious that the, the Krag was now a surplus gun. Uh, many thousands of them were given to uh, American Legion posts, uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars posts. Uh, some of these actually saw action during the uh, West Virginia Coal Wars in the hands of American Legion members who fought against the miners. Uh, but then when the U.S. ended up in places like Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and especially Nicaragua, this was the weapon that was given to the new constabularies that the Marine Corps had established in that region. 